Jesus is speaking to his disciples right before he ascends into heaven. <coughs> they say that many times the uh, last words that a person shares with you are some of the most important words. I'm sure this It is uh, true in this case because Jesus knows he's leaving his disciples. These are the last words he says before he's taken into heaven. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, oh, excuse me, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, if you look at this in this context, the disciples have been asking him questions about prophecy and the future. Ако разгледаме този стих в контекст, ще видим, че неговите ученици са му задавали въпроси във връзка с бъдещето, във връзка с това какво ще се случи. В шести стих четем, те го опитаха, казвайки, Господи, сега ли ще възвърнеш на Израил царството? И Исус успява да пренасочи техния фокус от пророчествата и за последните времена към боговестието. И аз отново го виждам този принцип проявен сред християните. Благодаря на Бога за пророчествата. Това е нещо много важно. Но това не е задачата ни днес. Като знаем какъв ще бъде края на Исус. Като знаем какво ще бъде в тези последни времена, като знаем колко ускорено времето нашата основна задача е да разпространяваме бъдеще. What he gives him here in verse 8 is an outline for the book of Acts. And it's a strategy the way that we should uh, conduct our ministry. To be witnesses to Jesus in Jerusalem. That's wherever we are. Ето тук сме ние. Иерусалим, това е нашия дом. И тъй в цяла Юдея. И това е мястото, областта около нас, около църквите ни. За нас Юдея е върлина на България. И после казва и Самария. Самария е включен в the area of Judea. And so he's emphasizing Samaria. Don't overlook Samaria. And then finally to the end of the earth. Okay, so let, let me give you some strategies concerning this. The prophet Joel had prophesied in Joel 2 and 28. Now, I'm sorry, this is in English, but uh, we'll try to translate it. I was working on this last night and yesterday, so we didn't have a chance to do it in Bulgaria. Че Бог ще излее святия си. Може по-нататък да го преведете този PowerPoint и да си слушате. Там се казва, аз ще излея духа си на всяка твар. Когато се погледнете на книга в Акте, There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, I 
има големи изливания на Святия Дух. Here's the first one, Acts, the second chapter, verses 16 through 18. И ето тук в Деяния втора глава, 16-18 стих. Yeah, Peter is quoting from Joel. Отново апостол Петър цитира Юил. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Но това е казаното чрез пророк Юил. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. И в последните дни казва Бог ще излее от духа си на всяка твар. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. И синовете ви и дъщерите ви ще пророкуват, юношите ви ще виждат видения и старците ви ще се нова цънища. And all my men servants and my maid servants I will pour out of my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Още и на слугите си и на слугините си ще изливам от духа си по тези дни и ще пророкуват. Now that's what Joel had been talking about. I will pour out of my spirit. Here's the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. It's in the 8th chapter. And I'll read verses 4 through 14 through 17. Now when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Апостолите, които бяха в Ерусалим, като чуха, че Самария приела Божието учение, пратиха им Петър и Йоанн, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Които като слязоха, помолиха се за тях, за да приемат Святия Дух. For as yet, he was fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Защото той не беше слязал още на нито един от тях, а само бяха кръстени в Исус Христовото име. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Тогава апостолите полагаха ръце на тях и те приемаха Святия Дух. This is the second major outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. И това е второто голямо изливане на Святия Дух. Here's the third one. It's in the tenth chapter of Acts. И третото е в десетата глава на Деяния. And we'll read from verse 44 through 46. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Докато Петър още говореше тези думи, Святия Дух слезе на всички, които слушаха Словото. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as they came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the Gentiles also. И обрязаните вярващи дошли с Петър, се смаяха, че дърът Святия Дух се изля и на язичниците. Защото ги чуваха да говорят чужди язици и да величаят Бога. Това са трите големи изливания на Святия Дух в книгата, отразени в книгата Деяния на Апостол. Но има нещо, което се откроява. Има нещо, което се откроява. Но има нещо, което се откроява. It's gone. Good. Thank you. Okay. What What was the difference between the outpouring of the day of Pentecost, the, the outpouring of the Samaritans, and the outpouring with the Gentiles? И каква е разликата между изливането в дени на педесиятница и изливането върху самаритите? There was a distinct difference between these three occurrences. Има разлики между тези три изливания. What was the difference? Каква е разликата? Think for just a moment. Помислете за момент. И върху кого се излива? Единия път е върху учениците, втория път е върху самаряни. Върху концентрични кръсове. Yeah, that's true. That's a good insight. But remember what the prophet said, I will pour out of my spirit. Аз ще излея от духа си, казва пророк Юил. Let me ask you a question. Why did the apostles have to lay hands on the Samaritans for them to receive? Why wasn't the Holy Spirit poured out on the day of Pentecost? Just poured out upon them. On the Gentiles? Just poured out. Everybody was amazed at what's happening. Защо на дени на 50-ти Святия Дух просто се е излял и после отново в музичниците отново се е излял, а при самарияните е трябвало апостолите да полагат ръце на тях. 
No, they were believers. It says these were the believers. When you read the first verses in chapter uh, Acts 8, it's a great revival that's taking place. The whole city of Samaria was stirred. Just, just put that in your thinking and just keep it in the back of your mind for a moment. Can, can, can you do that like, like a computer? You can have something running in the background while you're working on another program? Just put that question in the back of your mind. I want to come back to it. Okay, let me show you four different emphasis of the Holy Spirit in these, these chapters in the book of Acts. The first emphasis is on unity. And uh, I give you the quote here from Acts 2 and 5. They were dwelling in, in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. Acts 2 and 5. Now what this shows is the early Christian church was exclusively Jewish. All those first believers were Jewish. And that's what, what happened on the day of Pentecost. They came in for this, this Jewish feast from all over the Roman Empire. And so many of them that, that received this gift from God become Christians. But that was not, that was not what Jesus had said. God wants unity, but He wants it with diversity. They were all Jews in that original church. But I think this looks more like heaven will look. Amen. Yes, and so I, I've got here that this is a Native American, there's Mexican, here is African, and a Caucasian. So, I think that looks more like what heaven will look like. God wants unity, but He wants it with diversity. So in that early church, they had unity, but they were exclusively Jews. I, I don't want to be parts of groups that are just exclusive. It's like my brother said, I want God to give me longer arms. I would like to embrace people that are not like me. Amen. And, and, and I've discovered this. There, there's a, uh, um, a very uh, popular, famous Baptist pastor in the area where I live in Arkansas. A powerful preacher. And he's built a tremendous church of uh, last I heard something like 12, 16,000. But I heard him make this statement. He said, I have discovered that when we are exclusively together as Baptists, there's a certain anointing we have. But he said, every circle of relationships that we can break into <coughs> Different church organizations. Pentecostals, Nazarene, Presbyterian. The, the more 
circles we can break into, like the different races of people. Когато се събираме хора от различни общности, от различни деноминации, he said it multiplies the anointing. Now those are his words, but that's exactly what I believe the book of Acts shows us. God wants us to have unity. But with diversity. Now let me give you another thought here. This is what I call they call cross-culture evangelism. Това е което се нарича транскултурно благовестие. Което прескача границите на различните. Защо Исус напляга върху Самария? Тъй като Самария е била част от Юдея. Той вече е казал and then he said, and Samaria. Samaria was a part of Judea. <coughs> Why did he emphasize it? I think because we tend to overlook and neglect Samaria. You've got to go cross-culture in your evangelism. Да преминаваме границите на културите, когато разпространяваме благата ръка. Here's the second emphasis that I see in the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's on order. И втория акцент е върху реда. In Acts, the sixth chapter and verse seven, it talks about a church, a, a problem that arose in the church at Jerusalem. It, it's uh, the the disciples are multiplying, but remember they're all Jews. But even among the Jews, there is this division. You have the Jews that are Greek speaking and the Jews that are Hebrew speaking. As it said, then the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. If you look back in verse 1, this is where you see the complaint. И ето, ако погледнем към първи стих, защото вдовиците били пренебрегнати. В тази юдейска църква, част от тях говорят еврейски или арамейски, а еленистите говорят гръцки. They got into a division over the language that they use. And so because of this complaint, they, they ran into problems in the church. And, and the apostles have to deal with this problem to bring order. Because, because of the confusion that was coming, it was destroying the revival. Here's my point. Revival without order quickly loses its purpose. What we tend to do in revival is turn inward with our thinking. And we think that the revival we think the revival is about us and our needs. God wants to save our children. Uh, heal our bodies. What, whatever our needs may be. That's not the real purpose of revival. The real purpose of revival is to bring people to Christ. But the, these Jews in this church in Jerusalem had forgot the purpose of the outpouring of the Spirit. 
Yeah, they're complaining. My mama didn't get her breakfast yesterday. You, you, you fed them, so, you know, all the Hebrew widows got their meals. Why did you neglect us? You see what's happening? The revival has lost its purpose. And the way they restored it was, of course, through apostolic authority. И начинът по който се възстановява фокуса, целта е чрез апостолското апостолското Апостолите казват, избират няколко дякони, които да се погрижат за тази нужда. А ние ще се отдадем на молитва и на търсене на Бога. И само чрез апостолското авторитет може да бъде продължено съжалението в правилната посока. Третия акцент е върху авторитета. И ето тук ние виждаме църквата в Самария. В Деяния 8 глава първи стих ние виждаме, че съживлението, голямото съживление в Иерусалим предизвиква гонения. Винаги се случва така. Всъщност гоненията ги потикват, ги изтикват навън от Иерусалим. О, Бог да ни е напълнен. Аз си мисля, че много често Бог точно по този начин ни води. Нашите проблеми са тези, които ни потикват да се молим. Да търсим отговори от Бога. Те вече отдавна трябваше да се пръснали по Самария. Но не отидоха в Самария, докато не им припари под търката. И когато идват гоненията, ето какво четем. Saul was consented to his death, and at that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria. Now, let's be very practical. Why was it they did not like the Samaritans? Samaritans were a mixed race. It's a problem. Prejudice is a problem all over the world. Amen. We have to deal with it everywhere. Now, I, I try to say it in humorous ways. They say a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Uh, и да се шегувам и да казвам, че една лъжица захар uh, помага за преглъщане на лекарство. Но ви казвам, открил съм, че Бог не е бял човек. He's not. Не. He's above all that. Той е He's God of това. All kinds of people. Uh, той uh, при него ще има... Неговите синове са хора от всички раси и религии. Хора, които изглеждат като мен и които не изглеждат като мен. Амин. I know Brother Ruben has been giving us these exercises. Tell your neighbor, if it wasn't for you, I'd be the ugliest person here. Знам на брат Ruben, ще ги те погледни човека до себе си и му кажи, ако не беше ти, аз ще я да бъда най-грозния на това място. Но не се ли радвате, че Бог не изглежда като нас? Амин. Now we should look like God. But don't make God in your image. 
no, da ne kopim iz javne, nego do naši ovdje. Now this was the problem with the Samaritans. I to je bio problem sa Samarijanima. They were a mixed race of people. Te se bili smesen narod. They were considered inferior to the others. I na tjak se gledalo sa smiskuždenje u tjeku. In Mexico they have what they call macho. That's not just a Mexican problem. That's a problem all over the world. But the truth is, we are no better or worse than anybody else. We are all just people. Now let's talk about these Samaritans. The Samaritans did not receive this outpouring of the Holy Spirit until they recognized apostolic authority. I read it before, but look in verse 17. And they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. That brings us back to that original question. Why wasn't the Holy Spirit poured out like it was on the day of Pentecost? That's, that's what the prophet had promised. Here I believe is the answer. If they had not recognized the apostles at Jerusalem, they would have started their own church. They would have started the church of Samaria. Is anybody listening? God help us to, to, to pay attention to the things that God is emphasizing. And I believe this is one of the main reasons why the apostles had to come and lay their hands on by recognizing apostolic authority, it helped them to avoid division in the church. Now, let me give you the fourth emphasis. The fourth emphasis in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is on missions or evangelism. That, that is that's all that missionary work is. It's evangelism reaching out This was the fourth emphasis. In the, in the tenth chapter of the book of Acts, you find that God gives this revelation to the apostle Peter. Uh, let me just read this, this, this verse, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. He's simply saying, God is not a white man. Look at verse 35. In every nation, Whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Now I was greatly blessed yesterday by our sister telling her story. How that she was a part of another religion, but very devout. And she really didn't know God, but she knew there was a God. And she's seeking after him. And one day, God performed a miracle for her. And she said, I knew it was God. And so I prayed, God, 
Whoever you are, Hoje, would you reveal ele, yourself to me? And she starts reading her holy scriptures. E tia започва да чете своите светото писание. And her holy scriptures said. A нейното свето писание. Whoever does not heed the words of the Bible has fallen to the ground. Не се покорява на думите на Библията ще падне на земята. So she tells her husband. И тя казва. I want the Bible. And she gets a New Testament and she's telling the story how she began reading. When she got to the Gospel of John, suddenly she discovers that Jesus is the Savior. Are you listening? That's exactly what Peter says here. Let me read it to you again. In every nation, Wow, now he's thinking outside the box, outside Israel. Outside Bulgaria. In every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Peter has now received a revelation that God is not a Jew. Петър току-що е получил откровението, че Бог не е юдей. Това е голямо откровението. Защото за него в този момент Бог е бил еврей. А сега той осъзнава Бог е по-голям от това. Бог не е еврей. Амин? О, да. The Gentiles then recognize the spiritual authority of the apostles. И така езичниците тогава осъзнават духовния авторитет на апостолите. And the Holy Spirit is poured out on them. И святия дух е излян върху тях. Verse 44. И това е в десета глава. While Peter was yet speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. И докато Петър още говореше тези думи, Святия Дух слезе на всички, които служат от Слово. Because they recognized the spiritual authority and believed what was being said. Защото те признаваха апостолски авторитет и вярваха в казаното. Again, the Holy Spirit was poured out. Святия Дух беше излян. This was the original intent of the Holy Spirit. Това е било първоначалната цел на Святия Дух. The original intent of Jesus. Първоначалната цел на Исус. You shall be witnesses to me. И ще бъдете свидетели за мен. In Jerusalem. В Ерусалим. That's right here. Ето тук. In all Judea. В цяла Юдея. Including Samaria. Включително и Самария. And to the ends of the earth. И до краищата на земята. Let me just recap this. Нека отново да повторим това. This is the strategies of the Holy Spirit. Това са стратегиите на Святия Дух. Unity. Единство. Order. Ред. Authority. Авторитет. And missions. И мисли. Now, if you take that and you show the opposite of that. Ако си помислим кое би било противоположното на всички тези неща. You see exactly the way the devil attacks us again. Ще видим начинът по който дявол ни атакува отново и отново. What is the opposite of unity? Кое е обратното на единството? Division. Or have we ever seen that? Разделението. God help us, but we've fallen into the devil's trap. Боже помогни ни да не падаме в този капан. God's purpose is unity. Божията цел е единство. Amen. And remember, it's unity with diversity. I really respect our, our brother from the Baptist Church. He has an excellent spirit. Some of the most dedicated, consecrated Christian workers I know are Baptists. They are an inspiration to me. We need unity with diversity. It's a little quiet, but it's still early Saturday or Friday morning, isn't it? It's this Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, here's, here's order. What's the opposite of order? 
Кой е обратното на ридъл? Объркването. Смута. Да сме наблюдавали объркване и смут в църквата? Объркване. Избягвайте се. Избягвайте се. Избягвайте се. Акцента на Святия Дух е върху реда. Всичко трябва да става по ред. And this is one of the complaints that I've heard from some of our Baptist brothers of us Pentecostals. Ето и едно от обвиненията, които пък братите баптисти отправят срещу нас пред десятки, че понякога ние изпускаме нещата от контрол и няма ред. Амин. Може би това е проблем само в Америка. That's why, you know, for instance, Uh, let, let, let me say this. Now, I, I appreciate so much the supernatural moving of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Prophecy is a powerful tool. <coughs> But I've seen prophecy out of order many times in the church. Creates all kinds of confusion. That's not God. That's not the Holy Spirit. He is not the author of confusion. God is an orderly God. Amen. Let me give you the third here. Authority. The disrespect for authority. А не уважението към авторитета. Липсата на покорство под авторитета. Толкова много хора са независими и не искат да се покоряват на никого. Те си мислят, че те самите са си авторитет. Акцента на Святия Дух е върху авторитет. И отново изтъквам, ако самаряните не бяха проявили уважение към авторитета на авторитет от Иерусалим, никога нямаше да получат дарвата на Святия Дух. Това са свързани към неща. И на последно място мисиите. Не знаем, може би ще смени от тази дума мисии с думата евангелизации. Може би благодействие. Ето това е. Мисионерското дело е протягане на църквата извън предел. A church that is not a missionary church is not fulfilling the will of God. We've got to find ways to become evangelistic in our heart. The truth of it is, every one of us, knowing Jesus Christ, are ready to meet God. И истината е, че всеки от нас, който познава Исус Христос, е готов да се срещне с Бога. Да те няма сред тялото Христово, значи да си в Божието присъствие. Аз не се плаш от смъртта. Как може някой да ме заплаш от Христос в Рая? Там ще бъде много по-хубаво. You got nice tile here, but it's nothing like the gold streets. Хубави плочки на стилка, обаче тя не представлява нищо пред златните улици. You got a nice metal gate out there, but it's nothing like the gates of Pearl. Там имаме прекрасни, прекрасна ограда с хубави порти, но те не представляват нищо пред тези тълкоседни порти две. Yes, so we know. We know our future is secure. Знаем, че нашето бъдеще е сигурно. Знаем, къде ще отидем един ден. Then why are we here? Защо тогава сме тук? There's one primary reason every one of us are here. Има една причина ние да сме още тук на тази. To take somebody to heaven with us. Да вземем още някога да се върнем. Don't go alone. Не отидете сами. 
Amen. That's why we're here. That's what Jesus was saying. That's what the book of Acts is teaching us. And let me just talk to you heart to heart for a few moments. Been praying about you and your country. What is the greatest opportunity for revival in Bulgaria? It's not inside the church. It's outside the church. Amen. That's where it is. Where, where is the greatest opportunity? It's with those that have the greatest needs. Jesus said, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Why did he preach to the poor? Why did he go preach to Herod, the king? Because you're wasting your time with Herod. Herod thinks he's God. He doesn't recognize his need of God. But the poor are crying out every day for help. Looking for answers. It isn't that God doesn't love Herod. It's that Herod is not open to receive a message from him. Or have the gospel preached. Where are the greatest opportunities in Bulgaria? It's, it's cross culture. Who are our Samaritans? Are you listening? You must identify them. You must take the gospel. One of the reasons that the Samaritans were rejected by the Jews was they worshipped other idols, other gods. That's where I believe the greatest opportunity for revival is in Bulgaria. Those that pray to other gods, they do not know who Jesus Christ is. Now I hope I'm challenging you today. Because I'm, I, would, I, I remember when I first came to Bulgaria, there was revival in Bulgaria. Everything was falling apart. I was here. I heard the story of people even eating the barks off the trees to just try to stay alive. But we forgot that now. Now it's a time of peace, prosperity. I've never eaten so good in Bulgaria in all my life. God's been good to you. If we're not careful though, it causes us to forget. And that's what's happened to many Bulgarians. So now they're seeking not after God, they're trying to make more money, they want a better job, a bigger house, a better car. And the revival has stopped. Amen? Now, I deal with this in the United States, and I, I look at my country. I really believe with all of my heart the greatest opportunity for revival in America is the Hispanics. 
е, че най-голямото поле за благовестителска дейност в Штатите е сред испано-говорящите. The, the Там те се считат за отхвърлените от обществото. Смята се, че 70% от тях живеят там нелегално. And a lot of Christians have got caught up in all the legalization, immigration laws. I am not a politician. I am not a lawmaker. I am a man of God. I am a pastor at heart. So I want everybody to know Jesus is the Savior. I could care less what their papers say. That's the government's job. My job is to preach the gospel. So I'm making it my focus in America. To try to raise up as many Spanish-speaking churches as I can. Because I do love my nation. It's been very good to me. I want to see God send revival to America. That's the way you ought to feel about your country. I want to see God send revival to Bulgaria. Where's he going to start? Your Samaria. Don't overlook your Samaria. And then you'll be able to have the privilege to take it to the end. I'm sure I'm preaching to myself as much as I am anybody else. But this is what I see the emphasis of the Holy Spirit. I really believe this Bible is true. It is not God's will that any should perish. But that all will come to everlasting. I don't want to see one person go to hell. Not one. Amen. Amen. Have you learned something today? I pray something that, you know, my heart can challenge yours. Let's, let's just close with a word of prayer and I want us to pray over these four words. This is the emphasis of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. Young church and how revival turned inward как съживлението се се обръща навътре и църквата се върна и хората за църквата забравя за самарианите забравя за краищата на света майка ми вчера не можа да закуси защото бурката в довиждане когато забравите фокуса си, когато си изкриви фокуса ви, не се съсредоточени в Бога, тогава се вглобявате в дребното. Нека винаги основните неща бъдат пред очите. I'm going to pray over each one of these myself, but I got for somebody, who would like to pray over unity? Кой иска да се моли за един сега? Just whoever. Okay, brother. Vladi, go ahead. Just stand up and pray. Pray good and strong so we can all agree with you. Господи, Твоята църква е една. Твоята църква никога не е била разделена в сърцето си. Независимо, че на външен вид сме различни деноминации, различни характери, различни раси, вътре дълбоко в сърцето, дълбоко в повърхността, Твоето тяло винаги е било едно. И нека всяка ръка каже на кръга сега, обичам да ти си цели. Нека всяко око да каже на велите глобове, всяка глава да каже на ръката. Обичам да искам да бъда си стеби. Благодарим те, че в сърцината на Твоето тяло винаги има младинство. Затова сега те молим да ни дадеш сила, за да отдържи това единство. Да се да ни да го запази, защото това е 
Yes, Father, we recognize that you're the God of order. You are not the author of confusion. Help us to understand as spiritual leaders. Some of our greatest responsibility is setting things in order. 
Главна отговорност е да поставяме ред. Let our worship be in order. Господи, нека и нашето поклонение бъде Let our preaching and teaching be in order. Нека нашето проповядване и поучение ставаме в ред. Rather than creating more confusion. Вместо да се създава повече обояване. We thank you for it. Ние ти благодарим за това. I want us to pray for those that are in authority. Who wants to lead in praying for those that are in authority? Искам да се молим за тези, които са авторитети. Кой ще се моли за това? Yes, go ahead. Святи Боже, Ти си авторитета. Ти си положил всичко, Ти си ни сътворил, Ти си създал законите. Ти си този, който ни е извикал към съществуване. Ти си върховният авторитет. И как Господи да не те слами с цялото си сърце. Господи да не приемаме Твоята воля, когато тя е живот за нас. И ти изтикаш Господи Твоят авторитет на всички, защото Ти си истина, когато може да бяхме и да следваме. И Господи изтикаш и даваш авторитет на Твоето служение. И ти поставяш служители и ти ти даваш им авторитет, за да извършат делото ти дошло. И ти сега те воля Твоя авторитет и благословение, Господи, да предизвикаш едания за всички за Тебе, Господи. И искаме да ти служиме, Господи, като се повторим, обманяме на Твоя авторитет и подчиняваме на Тебе, Господи. И Господи, си този мой годан и авторитет на църквата, Господи, благодаря Ти, че Ти ставаш своя авторитет върху църквата и върху служителите Ти, олези, които вършат Твоята воля. Благодаря Ти, Господи, ти поставяш пред нашите авторитети, Господи, ти поставяш това, на което трябва да търсиме, Господи, да изпълниме волята. Благодаря Ти, Твоят авторитет над нас, само Твоят авторитет над нас дава и над нас авторитет за подпасяване на царството. Yes, Christ, we recognize that you are the head of the church. And that you have set in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. We recognize those gifts that you have given to us. And we submit to them. We submit to them as those that care for our souls. Knowing that they must give an account to you. And we want that accounting to be joyous. Something that is a blessing to us. So we submit to our spiritual leaders. We recognize them as men and women of God. We pray for them today. We lift up their hands today. We encourage them today. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like for us to pray for evangelism to the ends of the earth. Can I pray? Yes, you certainly can. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Father, I pray that you give us a heart for the nations. Give us a bigger heart. God so loved the world. Give us a heart for the nations. Give us divine strategies, O God. As you have asked us to ask largely of you. Ask of me and I will give you nations. So we increase our faith, O God. Give us nations. Give us nations for Christ. Give us nations for your kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Be established throughout all the earth. I thank you for doing it. Do you believe God's heard our prayer today? Yes.